Hello and welcome to Quilt Addicts Anonymous. I'm Stephanie Sabine. This is our free motion quilting series where we're teaching you how to master free motion quilting with four basic quilting stitches that you can customize in many, many different ways to create an infinite number of possibilities for your next quilting design. Our goal is to help you be able to finish more quilts at home, either on your domestic sewing machine, we're doing quilts as you go for that, or on a long arm, we're gonna be showing you both ways. So I know there's a lot of you long armers out there who got the computerized function and it's great, but you'd like to also be able to do it yourself using your own hands to move it around. You can follow along with this as well. There's a pattern for this quilt. It's a very simple one because the, the star of the show is your quilting. We're not piecing hardly anything. We're just having nice plain blocks and there's instructions for both quilts as you go and if you're piecing everything together first to just work on it on the long arm. All right, so we also have quilt kits, which you can see behind me. We've got four different colorways that you can choose from, and everything is reordable. We're using solid fabrics from Clothworks. It is a lovely, nice substantive fabric, and it is great to work with and great to quilt with. And we also have batting included in those kits. And then you also, if you wanna use your own fabric, can just get a stencil pack that will have the four basic stitches that we are using on here and also um, a pounce pad. So make sure you check all that out over at shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. All right, today's video, we are just gonna be working on skinny borders. So what I've done here is I first, before we did any of this, is I marked out two inch increments on here because that's a really common skinny border size. Um, basically, you're just gonna measure in two and a quarter inches from the side and then two inches from the center there. And that's going to give you two inches here and then once this is all sewn together you'll have a two inch border here as well so this is really fun um i like to call this one the flight of the bumblebee because i feel like that's what it looks like when it's all together this is great for skinny borders great for kids quilts great for anything whimsical you want to do as always we're going to start out with our sketch pads so either a pencil and scratch paper or a whiteboard i really want to emphasize that when you are just sketching it does not matter if your lines are perfectly straight or the scale is perfect. We are just practicing the muscle memory at this point. So that way you can kind of develop that and know how to move around the quilt before you do it on the real deal. So don't, don't worry if that is a little crazy. All right, so what I like to do here is I'm gonna start in the corner and I'm going to do a loop and I'm gonna come down and then I'm gonna do a loop. And that way I can just do a loop at the top and a loop at the bottom, or in this case, it's kind of side to side. But either way, that's how I like to do it. And it goes really, really fun. And so you're just gonna practice that a couple of times, or as many times as you feel you need to. The goal is to not pick up your pencil, because it's not like we can pick up our needle and just move to another section. You just kind of want to get it down and get down the memory of moving it around in order to make that work. And I have done this stitch so, so many times, which is why I'm able to just kind of flitter around here. But don't worry if you need to think about it a little more before you're able to make it happen. Now, one thing that's important, and you'll see here, is these are all about the same scale. And that's important as you're working. It's easier for me to do here sketching out, and it's easier for me to do on the long arm than it is on the domestic. I'm gonna completely admit that. Um, it is a lot harder for me to keep the same scale when I'm going on the domestic. But this way, you know, when everything is said and done, your border is gonna look nice and uniform. Obviously, it's not gonna be exactly perfect because we are not machines, we are human beings. But if you can kind of keep the same scale as you go, then it's gonna create a nice overall look for your quilt. All right, let's do it with some needle and thread. All right, we're gonna come in along the side here. And again, I'm always starting off by kind of figuring out what I'm gonna be doing for my rhythm. I'm gonna come down, not all the way to the edge, but close. So that way I can come around the side. And what I kind of like to do is just have that little loop be in the center. So that way it's kind of pointing toward the center of that skinny border. You 
you really are just bouncing back and forth as you go. Going to travel in the outside here so that way I can work my way back. Now for this one, if you want to just keep doing that, you can absolutely keep just going back and forth with that small little loop and just really get that down. What I'm going to do though is I'm going to change it a little bit. I'm going to try to do a bigger loop this time and see what that does to the shape. over here so that I can really fill that in nice and evenly. This one looks more like a big bubble. Oop, went over, that happens. This is why we have practice pieces. this loop but it's okay you are not a machine I need to leave myself a little bit more space there I got a little too close there we go leave some space Let's see a little bit more texture there though All right, again, if you just wanna keep practicing that, keep practicing that. I think what I'm gonna do now is do single loops that make it fill the whole two inch strip here. So let's see how that'll go. So we're gonna do a nice big circle here. I want it to be about two inches so we can fill all the way. And we're gonna come down and this time our crossover is going to be at the bottom. Now this is definitely one that I find a lot easier to do and make it look nice and round on the long arm than on the domestic. I just find it a lot easier to do that range of motion but again I cool a lot more often on my long arm than on my domestic so that is going to account for a lot of that ease that I'm able to do things better. Whatever you do more often is what's gonna be easier for you.
All right, for this next one, we're gonna do a double loop and I'm gonna fill that whole space again. All right, so for this one, since we're doing the double loop, my first one I want to be kind of medium sized. I don't wanna fill the whole thing so that I got room to move around. So we're gonna do the double loop and go around. And since that one was on the left side, we're gonna travel over here so that the crossover point is gonna be on the right for this one. So same deal, I want this first loop to be smaller. And I'm not worrying about that crossover point being right at the bottom. I just kinda want it to be on the right side. I find that these are a lot easier to do than the really big loops. I just think it's easier for me anyway to get a nice, smooth, decent looking curve because you're not like aiming for a circle. You know, you're aiming for something that's a little bit irregular in shape. And so I find it's easier for me to get these to look better, at least when I'm on the, the long arm or the domestic. The long arm is another story. All right, I probably need to leave myself a little bit more space there do a little better job the next one. But here's the deal. So like say I didn't leave myself that much space there. It didn't go as, as I had hoped or as I planned. That's not the end of the world. You just need to like not think about the mistake that you just made because then you're not gonna do very well on the next one if you're thinking about the mistake you made on the last loop. So you kinda gotta let it go. Channel Elsa a little bit, let it go. Don't worry about it so much and just be in the moment. All right, let's get crazy. Let's do some double loop meanders and let's do that original flight of the bumblebee pattern and see what that looks like. So this is gonna be a tiny. All right, so loop one. Do loop two. All right, now we're gonna come down. We're gonna fill in the next section. So loop one. And I gotta keep in mind, I didn't do a very good job of it, that I've got a seam allowance there. I'm gonna lose part of that loop to that seam allowance for sure. It's gonna happen. All right, so let's come over. Loop one. Loop two, I'm gonna try and do a little bit better job of having that loop actually cross at the bottom. That will be helpful in making everything turn around nicely. The biggest thing when you're working in a small space like this and you have a design like this that has a lot of layers to it where you have to leave room to be able to go around is you've got to leave yourself space. And if I get too close then I'm going to end up cutting stuff off or I'm going to end up going into the other side of the border and it's just really easy to have things just get too tight. And if you like a really dense quilting, I do on a lot of occasions. Um, that's okay, you know, that could be a desirable effect. But if you're trying to keep everything nice and loose, then that may not be what you want to be able to have everything super tight and right on top of each other. So you kind of got to learn like what your preference is, what you like in your quilting and sort of cater to that and try to make the stitches do what works best for you. What do we got going on here? Sounded like Bob and Triple. Oh yeah, we got Bob and Triple. All right, I have to rip a little and we'll be back.
Yeah. All right, we got some really wonky stitches there. That's what happens when you lose your rhythm. You gotta find it again. Sometimes it takes a minute. All right, let's get one more little loopy loop in here. One thing that I really like to do is just like follow the curve when I'm quilting off because I could have just gone straight out and that would have that would have worked, but I think it looks so much nicer when you can kind of go in like that. Well, I hope you guys had fun with this one, trying out all the different loops that we've learned over this section of the course to really fill in with our skinny borders. You can see how it really changes. This is all the same design. It's a basic loop. And with that, we can do a tiny little loop that's going back and forth, kind of like a ribbon candy design, or we can make those loops a little bit bigger and make it look more like little bubbles. We can make them really big and have them look more like circles, albeit not perfect, and that's okay. We can do our double loop nice and big, or we can do our double loop nice and small, where we're kind of going back and forth like we did with this. So same basic shape. We are doing a loop but look at the five different designs we're able to create by changing first changing scale and then second just adding a second loop around so that just shows you that if you get one stitch down but you learn how to adjust that to fit what you're working on you can create a totally different look and this doesn't just go for skinny borders it obviously goes for many many different options as we've shown over the course of this week and make sure that you are tuning in uh, to see our next one. Our, our next series, we're gonna be moving into swirls. So that'll be really fun. It's a really common stitch. It's a, one that people learn really early on when they start quilting. So make sure you head into that. But first, we're gonna do a little show and tell where we can see where I've used this on actual quilts. All right, don't forget, you can get the pattern plus the stencils and the kits that we're using over at shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. Use that in any combination, you can use your own fabric, but we do recommend you get the stencils even if you are doing it on your own. That way you can really get the muscle memory down for this before you start changing it all up to do your different designs. Because getting that muscle memory down that first time and having a line to follow makes it so much easier to be able to get this down and then be able to create some really cool customizations. All right, thanks for following along and until next time, happy quilting. Mm -hmm.